Hey friends, Regina here with Berkshire Yoga Dance and Fitness. This is Yoga for Healthy Bones via my home office. Welcome. This class is geared towards anyone who has osteopenia or osteoporosis, or you just want to prevent those things and, and stay as healthy as you possibly can. It really could be called a Yoga for Healthy Aging class as well. So totally suitable for all ages. But I, I encourage you to really listen to your body um, especially if you're new to exercise and if I suggest something doesn't feel right for you um, or what's happening for you today or some of the issues you may have please don't feel as though you need to do anything uh, adjust and uh, take a break if you need to and and make it make it work for you the class and feel free to email me anytime with any questions you have so I'd like to just introduce the props you're going to need today um, I have my can of beans again, two cans of beans. You can also use weights, obviously, if you have weights. But if you don't have weights, that's where I thought the beans are handy as well. If you have a block around, a yoga block, that's going to be great too for one of the poses um, we're going to do later. If you don't have it, don't sweat it. You can also roll up a towel as well. A chair is going to, going to be um, helpful today. A folding chair is ideal, but it could be a dining room chair also as well. And a blanket, right? Blanket's really nice for the knees. And we're gonna start on our backs today and having that blanket underneath is gonna be very nice. The other thing is um, dowels. So I like to use these in my class and I learned about using these for posture from Sarah Meeks, check her out, she's awesome. And you'll see what we're gonna do with these later. But if you don't have one, which you probably don't, um, don't despair because I'm also suggesting you could use a broom. Do you want to make sure that there's something rubber or sturdy on the bottom because we're going to be using this for balance. If you don't have a broom, um, I've received the suggestion that a cane might work. You may have um, a cane around the house. Again, want to make sure it has that good rubber bottom. And if you don't have either of these, then a chair is going to work just fine. Um, so, and a pillow. Um, a pillow will be for Shavasana at the, at the end of class for underneath our heads. I think that's it. I'm going to put these to the side and we'll get started. So you can um, open up your blanket so it's on your mat. The, the weights or the beans can be not too far away, the block not too far away either. So open up the, the blanket. And one way, you know, you want to really avoid, we do try to avoid rounding in this class because it puts a lot of extra pressure on the front of the vertebral bodies. And if you have osteoporosis, that can, that can increase the chance of, of getting a compression fracture, so which we're obviously trying to avoid. So we'll work more on extension and back bending rather than on uh, forward folding. So even as we come down onto our mats to be mindful, not to be like rounding over, right? So maybe just coming over onto the side, getting the arm long there and then rolling onto your back. Right? So come to a comfortable position here with the knees bent. I like to have the knees on the mat, not on the blanket, okay? And the, um, the feet are in line with the hips, arms by your side. This is constructive rest pose. One of my favorite poses is excellent for the back. So even anytime you're feeling, whether it's any kind of stress, even mental stress, but physical as well, if the you know, lower back kind of aching, this is a nice one to do. So just Relaxing here, the arms, the palms can be open, facing upward. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth and say, ha. Ah. Feel like you're softening and relaxing into the earth as you do that. Inhale, big breath in. Exhale, ha. Ah. Make a noise and release any tension. Take another breath in through the nose. And exhale, releasing out. Let the shoulders relax. Let the hips release. We're not pressing our lower back 
into the ground here, nor are we arching it away, right? We're just letting it sort of be normal. And there is a little space there. We want to maintain the curves of the spine. That lumbar curve is important to maintain. And let your attention drift inward. Noticing where the, you feel the breath in the body. Noticing how you're feeling today. Maybe becoming aware of everything that's touching the ground. Just feeling that connection with the earth. Let your body ground down a little bit. Relax the jaw and the face. Breathe. And one way I love to bring my energy down and relax is belly breathing. You can keep your hands where they are or you can bring them to rest on your belly. And instead of breathing up into the chest, which is a more anxious breath, which is the way we're breathing a lot, you're getting in the habit of breathing into the belly more. So let's try several rounds of that. Inhale, breathe into the belly, expand the belly, blowing it up like a balloon, and exhale, deflating the belly, right? Exhaling, drawing that navel gently down towards the floor. Inhale, expand the belly, Exhale, deflating, you're releasing your belly away from your hands. You can even keep the hands where they are. Inhale, breathe into those hands. Exhale, deflate. And just continue like, like this at your own pace. Nice, easy belly breathing. As you're doing this, notice if there's another part of your body that's clenching. Soften and relax that. Let this be nice and easy and smooth. On those inhales, too, feel as though you're bringing in new life, new, new energy, fresh prana. And on the exhales, a sense of letting go and releasing what you don't need. You'll feel some gurgling in the belly. That's a good thing. It's relaxing. A few more rounds. Releasing any technique there. Maybe releasing the arms by your sides, palms up, taking a moment to just feel how that belly breathing, that diaphragmatic breathing, that makes you feel. I'm going to do a little flow here that I learned from my friend Gabriella Barnstone. And we're going to begin with the feet come together, the big toes touch, the arms are by your sides, palms down. Inhale into a butterfly where the knees splay out to the side, the soles of the feet touch and the arms go up overhead. If there's an issue with the shoulders, the arms can just stay by the side. Exhale, hug the knees into your chest, give them a good hug. Inhale, arms and legs straight up into the air. Exhale, hug those knees into the chest. Inhale, butterfly, it's a baddha konasana, soles of the feet touch, knees out to the side. And exhale, starting position with the feet on the earth, arms by your side. And again, inhale, butterfly, arms up overhead. Exhale, hug the knees into the chest. Inhale, arms and 
legs straight up into the air. Exhale, hug the knees into the chest. Inhale, butterfly, widen those knees. Bottom of the feet touch, arms overhead. Exhale, starting position, feet to the earth, arms by your side. One more time. Inhale, butterfly, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hug the knees into the chest. Inhale, arms and legs straight up into the air. Exhale, knees into the chest. Inhale, butterfly. Exhale, arms by your side, feet on the earth. So we're going to add a few variations here to this. Inhale, butterfly, fly and pause. So soles of the feet touch. And just let the knees relax. Soften that inner thigh area. And breathe. With a breath in, exhale, hug the knees into the chest. Pause here, bring the hands to the tops of the knees, rotate the knees in a circle, giving that lower back a massage. You can start small and maybe make these circles kind of concentric as they start to get a little larger. Pause, reverse that direction, take it the other way. Come on back to center. Lift the legs and the arms straight up into the air. We're going to make circles with our ankles and also making fist circles with the wrist. Keep a nice little bend in the knees. Reverse the direction. Clenching everything up. So squeezing your um, hands, making fist and scrunch up your toes. Scrunch. The feet here, inhale, exhale, spread the toes and the fingers wide. Inhale, scrunch them up. Exhale, spread them wide. Inhale, scrunch. Exhale, spread out. One more time. And spread them out. Now flippers, so flipping the ankles and the wrists forward and back. And then the, the wave, the, the queen wave. And shake that out. Inhale here, exhale, hug those knees into the chest. Maybe rock side to side this time. Come on back to center. Baddha Konasana, last time, butterfly, reaching the arms. And exhale, hands by your sides. Okay. Dead bug to strengthen our core. So it looks like this. Lifting the feet up, the knees are over the hips. The shins are parallel to the earth. The feet are active, which means I'm pressing through the heels. Bring the hands to rest on the knees. Inhale, my left leg is going to extend towards the front. I'm going to let that foot hover as my right arm goes overhead. This knee stays right where it is. Come on back to center. Other side. Right leg goes forward. Keep the foot flexed. Left arm overhead. And we're going to keep doing that. We're not moving with momentum, going very slow. The belly's engaged. So, you know, drawing that navel in and keep going. Inhale, coming back to center. Exhale, other side. So keep the knee over the hip. Don't draw it in like that. Keep it over. It's going to be more challenging. Okay, stay with it. Keep moving at your own pace. Slower is harder. If you need to drop the foot down to the earth, you can. Otherwise, keep it hovering. Stay with it. Keep breathing. Take deep breaths. It helps. If you need to stop before I suggest stopping, then please do. Otherwise, stay with it. Keep going. Almost there. Let's take two more each side. If you want to keep going for more, keep going for more. All right, then bring the feet down. Let the knees touch now and splay the feet wide. This is also a nice release for the lower back and breathe. Oh, bring the hands to the belly. Let's take a moment here. Okay. 
Separate the knees, have the feet nice and wide. So the feet are about the width of the mat here. And you can tee your arms out to the side. We're going to windshield wiper the knees and the hips side to side, nice and easy. Just loosening up those hips. Come back to center. Good. I'd like to suggest we do a, um, a shoulder press next. Wasn't planning on this, but just occurred to me it's a great one to do. Um, arms by your side, we're in that constructive rest pose. Palms up, and the arms are about a 45 degree angle from the body. Imagine you have sponges underneath your shoulder blades here, right underneath the shoulders. Take a breath in, fill the sponges up, with water and on the exhale like we're squeezing out all the water press the shoulders into the earth so it's important to keep your belly draw, drawing in so you're not arching the back as you do that good inhale soften relax as you fill up the sponges with water those sponges behind the shoulders exhale squeeze them down shoulders press straight down into the earth inhale relax exhale press them down and again, inhale and exhale, press them down. We're strengthening the thoracic spine, which is really important. And release. Now the other way is now we bring our fingertips to rest on our belly. Feel the elbows on the earth. Inhale here. Exhale, press the elbows strongly into the earth. And you're lifting the shoulder blades just a little bit off the earth. Inhale, soften, relax. Exhale, strongly press the elbows into the earth. Just lifting those shoulders a little bit, shoulder blades. Inhale, relax. Exhale, press those elbows down. Really feel the chest expanding here. See if you can stretch as many muscles as you can. Inhale, relax one more time. Press the elbows down and release. Good job. Let's roll over onto our side. I'm going to suggest here you fold the blanket in half if you haven't. You have a little bit more support for that hip. So let's come on to our um, right side. I'm not going to mirror you here. And bring the forearm so that it's resting on the earth. The elbow is underneath the shoulder. The palm facing out. If it's a little more comfortable, come to the side you can. But it is important that you have the shoulder over the elbow and the shoulder back. So we're not collapsing here. The shoulder is back. The legs can be bent and reach the shoulder towards the hips. So it's getting, the, the shoulder blade is getting engaged on the back, hands on your hips, press down um, the forearm down into the earth. This may be as far as you wanna go. We're doing like, it's like a side plank here. Also excellent for the back. One arm, the arm can come up also. If you want more challenge here, right, you're going to press that form down again. Keep the shoulder back and lift the hips up. Breathe. Right? Arm can stay here or go up. Stay with the breath. Make yourself long now, so come all the way down. Again, really important to have that blanket underneath the hip for this move. So I'm making myself as long as I can. My feet are stacked on top of each other. I'm flexing my feet, those active feet, getting as long as I can here. I'm, I'm resting my, um, my head on my bicep here. The hands in front for balance. So inhale, press that right hip down into the earth, squeeze your inner thighs together, lift the legs up together so they were one leg. Right? So option one, right here, stay right here. Option two is, this is a balance too, it's to lift the arm up. Right? But you can stay here the whole time, keep squeezing, I'm pressing through my heels, squeezing those inner thighs. Right? And the other option if the arm is up is to reach it towards the other room, long, lift the legs, lift both arms, right? Breathe, it's so easy to hold the breath 
in these kind of poses. This is hard, right? We're working hard. We're strengthening the outer hip. Breathe. Stay with it. Another breath. And release down. Ah, just take a moment here. Good job. Gently um, roll over. We're going to do the other side. I'm just going to go and switch sides this way so you can kind of still see me. Otherwise, you can just roll over on your mat onto the other side. So we're coming now onto the left hip. We'll start with um, the side, side plank. So keeping your body in a straight line, bending the legs, get an elbow under shoulder. So not over here, right? Not over here, right? Underneath that shoulder, forearm nice and long. I'm really pressing that whole forearm down, my hand down. And this area too is important. The side body, you're not collapsing, right? So lift that away from the earth. You can take your hand like that and lift it away. Shoulder is back, right? And then reaching it towards my hips. Press the forearm down. Option one, lift the hips up, right? Keep pressing that forearm down and reaching that shoulder towards your hips. Breathe, keeping that shoulder really safe. Option to lift the arm up. Now you, again, as I mentioned, you can keep your hips down the whole time, right? So you can be here the whole time. You can just keep it down, right? Otherwise, stay with it. Breathe. Another breath in and out, and take it down nice and slow. Extend that left arm long. I'm gonna rest my head on my bicep here. I'm gonna bring my heels together, my feet together, flexing my feet, making my body as long as I possibly can, right? So we're not scrunching up. We're gonna leave, we wanna leave class, class two inches taller than we are. So we're, a lot of work on lengthening, lengthening the body. Right? Okay, so press those legs together. You got your hand in front for balance here. Press the hip down into the earth. Lift the legs up. Do you squeeze those inner thighs together? Stay with the breath. Keep the breath easy. This hand can stay down or we can lift it up. This is two for one here. We're working on balance, also strengthening the hip. The arm can go up overhead. Maybe the other one lifts up. Squeeze those inner thighs. It's like we're like a panini pressing them together. Press through the heels. Breathe. Keep the jaw soft. Another breath in. And release down. Nice job. Let's make our way onto our bellies. Coming right into Sphinx Pose for a rest. Ah, so with Sphinx, we're getting our elbows under the shoulders. The forearms are parallel. And I like that. I really like the blanket underneath my hips. And for the lower back, I find it's a little nicer in the lower back to spread my legs the width of the mat, let the heels fall out and toes in. I know it sounds a little weird. But give it a shot. I'm pressing my elbows into the earth, I'm lifting my chest. It's as though I'm trying to move my chest through the, my arms, my shoulder blades away from my ears. Breathe. It's a great stretch too on the abdomen. And without really twisting, just look over the right shoulder. Just look back, give your neck a little stretch. Look to the other side. Come on back to center. Option here for low dolphin plank. Another great um, pose I love for core. We did this last week too. Last week I, have, I suggested the um, arms parallel. It's a little harder that way. This way I'm going to do them more as a tripod. I'm interlacing my fingers. I'm going to bring my feet closer together, more parallel, curling my toes under. Option one, right? I press my forearms down, knees stay down, and I lift the hips up. Right? Breathe. So I'm using my core here, very strong. You can imagine sometimes that um, 
I like the image of zipping up a really tight pair of jeans, that remote movement you would make in your belly, that's what you're doing, breathe. For those that want a little more challenge here, the knees can come up, right? Keep pressing the forearms down. Now, one thing you wanna avoid here is you don't wanna be sinking down like that, nor do you wanna be even piked up, right? So it's more like a flat board, low plank, but it's okay for the hips to be a little bit higher, right? Than the knees, but just not too much. Breathe, relax the jaw and the face. This is a good workout for me, talking and doing the pose. Reach through the heels, my chest is reaching forward, back of the neck long, so don't look up, nor look that way, just keep the back of the neck long, breathe. The quads are engaged, super pose. We'll drop the knees, we'll drop the hips, oh, we'll come all the way down and release. Make a pillow with your hands. Place the forehead on the back of that top hand. Ah, and let your body go. And sometimes when you come out of a pose like that, it's nice not to fidget, just to release and relax the body. And feel it, really feel it. Feel that experience of energy, building the energy and letting it go. Let's do some belly breathing here. I'm only lifting my head so you can hear me well, but stay, stay where you are with your um, looking straight down. You can close the eyes and do some belly breathing where you, that would, like we did at the start of class, inhaling, pressing the belly into the earth. You really get a sense of it here in this pose, in crocodile pose. Exhale, drawing the navel away from the earth. Inhale, press, expand the belly rather, pressing it into the earth. Exhale, draw it away. Nice and easy. Let's do this for a few rounds. Keep those cheeks soft and relaxed and the tongue soft in your mouth. Maybe swallow a few times. So locust pose, Shalabhasana, I love this pose, a real great strengthener, a back strengthener. The forehead comes to the mat, the hands come behind you. Let's try it actually a different variation this time. You can have the hands behind you, or you can cactus the arms here, forehead on the earth, right? palms facing down. I'm going to draw my shoulders down away from my ears. So here's what they look like up by my ears. We don't want that, we want them down away from the ears, lift one leg and reach it long and bring it back down and lift the other leg, reach it long again, creating length before we do anything else with it. Inhale here, press your thighs down into the earth and lift, lift like there's a string on the back of your neck, lifting you up your head and shoulders. You can keep the legs down if you want, otherwise lift those up. If you're feeling lower back pain, you may be lifting too high, so bring the legs a little lower. And feel like you're lifting here from that inner thigh, lifting up, maybe squeeze the shoulder blades a little here, breathe. Relax the face, don't hold the breath. On the inhale, you're feeling yourself maybe coming up a little higher, on the exhale, coming down a little lower. For a little more challenge, we can swim the arms forward and take them back. Maybe move the legs or not, just stay there. Couple more breaths. We do hold the poses a little bit longer, so we're getting that good stress on our bones, which helps to rebuild the bones. Stimulates the osteoblasts and osteocytes to rebuild bone. And let it go, just release. Oh. And just feel the earth holding you up here and melting into it. Maybe rock those hips side to side. Bend the knees when she'll wipe with the legs. Bring the tops of the feet down, forehead to the mat, hands underneath your shoulders. 
Curl the toes under and press on up using your core to all fours. Okay. Having your um, either weights or your can of beans nearby here. This is optional. We're doing extended um, mountain tabletop here. And if you're using um, the beans, let's take the can of beans in our left hand. Okay. Extend the right leg long. We're going to roll on those toes a little bit forward and back, giving ourselves a calf stretch first. My wrist is pretty much under, going to be underneath my shoulder. My fingers spread wide. And then come to a stationary spot here. Lift the right leg up. Doesn't have to lift high, right? That can kind of cause a little bit issues on the lower back. So don't lift it high. Toes point down. Heel is pressing towards the mat. Option to lift this left hand here with or without a weight. Back of the neck long. Let me do some reps. These are non-curling reps. Okay. Inhale here. Exhale. I'm bringing that can or weight towards my knee without rounding. And send it out. Inhale in. And exhale. Send it out. A lot of control. Inhale. Exhale out. Let's pause. Reaching that hand towards the front, reaching the heel towards the back. So tempting to lift that hip, trying to keep it even. Breathe belly in and strong. Hearing the sound of your own breath. Let's take it down. Ooh, good. And just take a moment here. And just come up to a high kneel. Ooh. Let's rotate those wrists a little bit, shake them out, releasing anything there. We'll do the other side, bringing the weight into that right hand. Extend the left leg long, rolling forward and back on the toes. Give the calf a nice stretch. And when you're ready, lifting the leg back. I know I have such a tendency to lock out my elbows, so keep, keep a little softness in the elbows too. Reach that heel, arm goes forward. Breathe, yeah. Draw that knee towards your hand, coming in and exhale out. Inhale, without rounding the spine, I know it's hard. Inhale, and exhale, we'll take one more. And send it out, pause here, reach the hand forward, reach that, trying to get that footprint on that back wall, breathe belly in. Relax the face. And let's come down. Good, now I'd like you to take the block if you have one, if you don't, don't sweat it, we're gonna rest in a puppy. So one option is to bring the block or rolled up towel between your thighs and bring the forearms down. The spine is going to stay long. It's like a down dog, but it's it's nicer because we're not rounding in any way. My hips are staying high here. Okay. And I'm going to let my forearms rest on the earth. My spine is long. I'm reaching my sits bones towards the sky. And this block you can also just imagine you have one there. It's as though I'm pressing it towards the back. Okay? And this is stabilizing for the lower back. So if you get lower back pain or SI joint pain, something like this can feel nice. Give it a try and breathe, softening the heart towards the earth. Ah, rest in here. Observing yourself breathing. Walk one hand under the shoulder and the other and pressing on up to all fours. Remove that block that's there. Coming to a high kneel. Take your time. And I like to, the way I like to get up from the mat here is the, the matrimony pose. Stepping one foot forward. Now before you do that, my students know it's coming. If you're a lefty, 
Step forward with your right. If you feel righty, step forward with your left. Just getting in the habit of using the what we what we don't usually use, the non-dominant one. So I'm a righty, I'm gonna put my left foot forward, curl my toes under, and press on up to standing. Let's bend our knees a lot, like with a neutral spine, so we can remove this blanket, and then take it over to the side, and grab your dowel or your broom. Oh, let's just take a moment here in Tadasana. And look down to check. Make sure the feet are facing forward, you know, not to the sides. Or, and if anything, maybe the heels are a little bit wider than those toes. Little, little micro, little soft bend in the knees. Gently pressing the shins together and lifting. Imagining you're two inches taller than you are. Widening the, um, the collarbones here. Like they're, you're trying to get them to smile. Belly in and breathe. So we're going to take the, the broom or the dowel or the cane um, and I'm going to just turn to the side to show you this. It's going to touch the tailbone, the mid-back, and then the head. So the head, that's what we tend to have jutting forward, all that, all that texting going on. I know, I do it. I catch myself all the time doing it. So I'm bringing the head back and then feel your feet firmly planted. And breathe. And just a reminder, see if when you're walking around the house, which is where we're walking a lot these days, um, or around, around the block, to try to stand up like this. So imagine you have the, the dowel there, or the, the broom there, touching those three points. Great. You want to take a tree pose. Great pose for balance and also puts good stress on the bones. Weight will come to the right foot and feel the, um, the foot triangles. So, you know, they, they talk about the bottom of the foot, um, they, you know, experts, in either the four, you feel, you, you hear them say the four corners or the three corners. And I've had, I've studied with teachers who emphasize both. Um, and it would be underneath the big toe ball mound, the little toe ball mound. And the, if you're talking about the three corners, like a triangle, let's do that today, right under the center of the heel. Otherwise, the four would be both sides of the heel. So feel the foot triangle. Press down into that. Lengthen up. Find a point on the floor that's not moving, something stationary that you have your gaze on. We're going to bring this foot up. If you have to be here at the kickstand, that's cool. That's, that's number one. I like, I like the shin because we can get more of that isometric movement. We're gonna press our foot into the shin, the shin into the foot, lengthen up. The arm can go up and reach it up. So it's not a gentle pose, really. We're working hard. I'm lengthening this. I'm lifting my rib cage away from my pelvis and breathe. Reach it up, reach, reach, reach. Keep pressing that foot into the shin, shin into the foot, hugging my muscles to the bones. Now, if you don't need, if you feel like you're balancing, just lift this up. And if you if you just need to lift it up a little bit and try it and then bring it down, that's cool. Or both hands can go up in the air. And that's the beauty of this. And we've been here a little bit already, so we won't stay as long with our hands up. Ideally, try to build up to a minute. Okay? 30 seconds is great. Whatever you can do is great. Breathe. Lift, lift, lift. And then bring that dowel down or broom down. And let's have both feet hit the earth. Ah. Notice the difference in sides, right? the difference in the energy. Let's bring the weight to the other foot. Again, become aware of that foot triangle underneath the foot. Press it down into the earth. I like to imagine I have roots coming from my hips, through my legs, through my feet, going all the way into the center of the earth. Find that position. You, know, you can be up here if you want, right? But just try not to be on the knee right? because we're pressing into it. So I'm going to be right here on the shin. I'm lengthening up like a string on the top of my head, lifting me up. Right? When I find that nice posture, 
option with the dowel to be down or up in the air. Keep pressing your foot into your shin. Now, if you come out, just go back in. And you will notice if you practice your balance every day, which I hope you do, um, you'll notice that uh, some days are some days you just don't got it. You know, that's, that's normal. And one side is also um, often better than the other. Okay, breathe. I love this pose for the focus of it. Focus is the mind. Okay, let's put the dowels to the side. And I'd like you to take your chair. You don't need it, but if you are using it, let's put it over to the side here. Okay. Let's have it on our left side. It will mirror you here. Spread our feet nice and wide. I'm going to turn the left toes forward and the right are in. And I'm going to adjust the chair so that just my, my shin and my knee are touching. It's just a nice way to kind of find the alignment here. I want my knee over my ankle. I don't want that knee collapsing though. Really not safe for it, nor do I want it back, right? It's in line, my knee's in line with like my second and third toe. Press strongly into that back leg. If you need to straighten and bend it a few times, that's cool. And then we want it, so with two things going on, that this is one of the things I love about yoga, we're, we're finding the ground, we're feeling our feet, we're pressing down, press down into the foot triangles, down into the earth. At the same time, lifting that rib cage up away from the pelvis, that also engages the core. Okay? My sternum is facing towards you. My arms are long and then my gaze is over my left fingertips. Breathe and See if you can engage that left gluteal muscle, that left outer hip. Breathe. And keep pressing strongly. That back leg is really strong. Feel your strength here. You can also do these with the weights. Grab the weights and hold them in your hand. The shoulders out, they want to creep up, relax them down. A few more breaths. We, like I said, we're getting that good stress on our bones. We're holding poses a little longer. And release the hands down and straight in the leg. Turn the toes. And walk them a little closer. Heels and toes out. Five pointed star. And reach away. You feel like you're the energy from the center, your very core, and you're reaching out. This is like a power pose. When you do this, you just feel more confident and stronger. Really reach the fingertips long. Keep the heels in, toes out. Exhale, sink the hips down, goddess the arms. Belly in, inhale up and exhale. Inhale up. Five point and start. Exhale, sink it down. Pause here. Make sure the knees aren't collapsing, right? Keep them over the toes. Sink down. Breathe, bring the fingertips together. This is a soft, soft, gentle mudra. And release, straighten the legs. All right, I'm gonna move my chair to the other side. You can also just turn the other way so we can do the other direction. Make sure, you know, ideally, the whole chair is on the mat so it's not moving, but at least those back legs. Feet forward and lift the right toes, turn them to the right. The other foot, I like to turn it in. My sternum is facing you guys. And bend the knee and adjust everything accordingly. Like if you feel like, oh, I'm not getting a stretch here, bring that leg back more and then you'll feel it. So knee over ankle, engage this right outer hip. Legs are strong, right? Feeling those foot triangles. You can even lift all 10 toes for a moment. The chair is also here for balance, which is great. Lift the toes down. 
arms out to the side, look over the right fingertips and focus on your breath. Making some conscious breaths here. I'm taking a breath in and I'm taking a breath out. Shoulders soft and relaxed. Expand the chest. Breathe. Big breath in and breath out. Relax the hands down and straighten the leg. Lift the toes and turn. Cool, nice job. Walk the feet closer. One hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. Maybe close the eyes if you need the chair. Here you can be holding it. And going inward. Just like you're taking your inner temperature, your inner pulse. Noticing any shifts from the start of class. Breathe. Fluttering, open the eyes. I'm going to take a... Um, we're going to use the chair for this, and if you're familiar with side angle, you can skip the chair. You can even maybe sit on the edge of a couch, too. Right. I'm going to come to the edge of the chair. I'm going to give you an option to up-level this, too. Right. So we're sitting on the edge, not back. Get that nice, neutral spine. Feel those sit bones down. I'm going to turn my left foot out, that I am marrying you here, and my other leg is going long. Right? Nice and straight. Very similar to Warrior Two, what we were doing. Right? So really come on the edge of the chair is going to be important here. Right? Spine is nice and long. Inhale here. And exhale, that left forearm can just rest on the thigh. Now if you want to, um, well, you can stay right here. You can lift the arm straight up. You can reach it over the head. Turn the pinky side down. And feel that long line of energy from the edge of your foot all the way through the legs, the side body, rib cage comes away from pelvis and breathe. Now for a little more challenge here, I'm gonna bring my hand to my hip and I'm gonna come up off the chair. So that's an option too. And reach long, breathe. Feeling this really nice line of energy The left part of my chest, it can rotate towards the sky. I don't recommend looking up towards the sky, just looking forward. And notice if this is collapsing, right? We want to press away. Good. I'm bringing my hand to my hip, and I'm just going to sit back down. And just come with the feet forward. Take a moment. Getting ready for the other side. Again, sitting on the edge of the chair is key here. Turning that right foot out and the left one gets long. Keeping that knee over the ankle. Find the length, right? So we don't want to be collapsing. We're reaching up, find that length and leaning over towards that right side. My forearm is resting on my thigh. And I'm pressing, like I'm pressing my um, forearm into my leg. A little more, an isometric stretch. Arm can come up and the body can come up also off the chair. The breathe. The right part of my chest can rotate. This is a nice, really beautiful, strong stretch. Pinky side down, the shoulder, don't let it come up, keep it down and back. Good, breathe. And then we're gonna bring the hand to the hip and sit back on the chair. Ah, I'm just taking a moment here. So we're working hard in these poses. So we're posing one muscle group against another. And it's that, it's that weight bearing aspect 
of yoga that is, is excellent for our bones, but we do need to hold them. Um, and the studies show that you want to show a uh, hold the pose for at least 12 seconds to get any benefit. But if you hold more than 72 seconds, there's not, there's not more benefit in that. So, you know, shoot for, I like to shoot for between 30 seconds and a minute and build up. You're not going to, you're not going to necessarily just start doing these and get there so you can build up. Okay, let me do a twist here. And um, I know twists sometimes can be a little controversial. And if you, your doctor, your physical therapist has told you not to do twists because of your condition, then please, um, you need to listen to that. But the thing about twists is that they actually put, um, it circumferentially puts good pressure on the vertebrae. You know, so that's, that's it, they're actually very positive in terms of, and helpful in terms of um, building our bone mineral density. But what's important is the long spine, right? Before you twist, right? You don't wanna be rounding and then twisting. Right? So, so we're gonna really emphasize that. Um, so I'd like you to turn to the side, turn to the, um, the left here. So you're sitting on the edge of the chair Okay, you're sitting to the side, and it's almost hard to explain. You can vision, you can see what I mean. Here's the back of the chair. I'm gonna cross my um, left again. I'm mirroring you my left over my right, okay? and I'm gonna squeeze my um, my inner thighs, almost like I'm trying to not go to the bathroom here. I'm gonna cactus my arms. Inhale, lengthen up, and exhale. Spin towards the back of the chair, and let my hands rest on the chair. Keep squeezing the inner thighs and breathe. There's no benefit in over twisting, so just taking a nice, easy one. Keep the chin parallel to the earth and breathe. And slowly unwind. Good. We'll take that over to the other side. All right. So whatever leg, here's the key, whatever leg is closest to the back of the chair, that's the one that crosses over the top. Okay. I find the length, my sits bones press down, reaching up, right, and finding that length, Squeezing my inner thighs, cactus the arms, inhale here, and exhale, spin towards the back of the chair, and gently rest my hands there. Keep squeezing the inner thighs. Again, not death squeezes, not that like, uh, psycho squeeze. <laughs> um, just, a, just a nice little squeeze. Keep the spine long, keep the jaw relaxed, and find your breath. slowly unwind. I really want to emphasize again, not over twisting. More is not better with twisting. And then finding that having that good form and then a little bit of twisting goes a very long way. So um, that, that's really important. Okay, so we're winding down here. I'm going to suggest that for our Shavasana that we use the chair, okay? And this is just an option, obviously, if you want to do the traditional Shavasana. But gather all your things, everything you're going to need, and having the chair towards the edge of the mat like this is nice. Grabbing the pillow, take my pillow and my blanket. You could have a blanket underneath you on the ground here if you want. I also like to have a blanket on top of me for the weight. Okay. I'm gonna put that there, I'm gonna put this there. Oh, and I didn't mention my scarf at the beginning. So a scarf is great to have to put over the eyes also. So if you wanna um, take a moment and pause the video and grab that, you can. So otherwise, we're gonna come down, and again, coming down, being mindful, your spine as you come down, maybe coming onto your side and making yourself nice and long here. And scooching closer to the chair, and we're going to bring, come onto our back and bring our shins 
onto the chair and having a nice like an angle here, like about a 45 or so. Right? So not being too underneath like that. Right? Nice angle here. I like the pillow underneath my head, right? it's optional. And the blanket underneath on top right here. Right? Ah, bring the arms by your side, stay where you are getting cozy. I'm gonna put on some music. This is called Hands of Love by Duder. I'd like you to close your eyes, relax your jaw. Let your whole body soften into the earth. nothing to do here. It's a feeling of just letting go, relaxing, releasing. Let your tongue relax at the very base of it. The jaw be unclenched. Let the shoulders soften down. The whole torso, the legs, the feet, the arms, feel as though your body is melting into the earth, just like a stick of butter in the sun. And there's absolutely nothing to do. Sometimes I even like to say my own name and just let, let myself know it's okay. It's okay to let go. It's okay to surrender.
and staying exactly where you are. Take a nice big breath into your heart space and exhaling, blow it out. Become aware of your body and the space around you. Become aware of your breath. And maybe reaching the arms up overhead and drawing the knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice hug and rocking side to side. making your way over to one side, pausing there for a few breaths. Let your body be heavy. And extending that top leg long and using your hand to press on up to seated. Let the head Come up last. And if you want, you can either sit on the chair or just sit on the ground. And taking a moment here, just feeling your body, feeling your mind, and feeling your energy. Bringing the hands together, the heart center. And I thank you so much for joining me today. Be well and be safe. Take care.